Hello and welcome to my narrated uh, rolling footage. Um, I've gone back in time a bit to uh, look at some roles I had with uh, Jason and Gosha uh, a couple of months ago. This is interesting because <clears throat> in this session I use a lot of um, back and mount defending and escape techniques that I've been learning from uh, Estonian black belt Preet Mikkelsen. Um, I've been using it for, by, th by, by the time you see this footage, I will have been using it for a, a good 8-9 months. So this footage shows that I'm a little bit more familiar with the postures and using them, applying them in action. So let's have a look. I'll pick it up at about 6 minutes into this particular video, but we're probably midway through our hour, hour, hour 20 long rolling session. So I'm fairly tired, so have a look and see what you think. Um, Okay, starts off with Jason passing my guard, and immediately, um, as he sort of throws my legs over, you can see I've turned into this curling fetal type posture. Um, my left leg is stepped over my right leg, and I'm turning my head towards the floor, and my shoulders are not directly pointing to the ceiling, but I'm pointing more towards this wall here. Um, Prick calls this the running man. Um, uh, Vim, Vim Deputer also teaches this as the running man and I've been using a lot, I f it's probably my most used position as a sort of, uh oh someone's passed my guard, um, I better better defend myself. So rather than turning into full turtle, which would um, be slightly less advantageous, running man gives me a very strong position to defend and also uh, move on to another position. So let's see what, pick it up again and see what happens then. So Jason's trying to tug away. By the way, Jason is fully aware of Running Man. He knows that I do it all the time. So he's he's not falling into the usual things that people who are not familiar with it do, like tugging my hair, trying to go for strangles, that sort of thing. As he's trying to leave me open. There we go. So that was an interesting point. Let's go back there. So he is probably doing a good thing in that most people, when they encounter Running Man, they, they just try and go for the strangle. They try and wrap around for the seatbelt grip. Um, and and thinking that oh you know back control is easy it's not easy when you have someone using running man posture so he's trying to lever my far shoulder over and uh, if I had a wider stance it would make it harder for him but you, you see that leg here it's not very wide so uh, I haven't kept running man in as strong a stable position as I probably could have I could have resisted a bit better is what I'm trying to say so he's levered me over and taking one leg over the shoulder here, which sort of gives him, a, if he could free this bottom leg, he could get the some sort of a inverted triangle on me or reverse triangle on me. But what this leg also does for me is that I have pretty much basically an underhook underneath his leg. So that's an escape route for me. But what I'm thinking of at the time is that I immediately go into a defensive posture, which is something that Preet calls the hooking. The hooking is like the um, mirror image of the running man. The left leg here sticks out and the right leg plants a foot on the ground and I'm curling and I'm trying to get my head here to this position here. Let's have a look see if I do that successfully. Right, so this is an interesting point. I have lowered my body position in relation to Jason's. This is a very good tactic if you find yourself uh, having your back attacked by someone who's very good at it. If you lower your body down so your head is more like to his stomach level, it's very hard for him to control, uh, strangle you from there or pull for an armbar or do a number of things. He still has control over you, but it's 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 step one in your escape out of back control uh, strategy. Uh, handily, he has created a loop here by grabbing his own shin at this point. So. The escape is not as easy as as perhaps you see on videos and tutorials, but still, it's it's just another hurdle you have to come across, uh, not insurmountable. Uh, he, I think he also has yes, he has a I have a hold of his sleeve or he has a hold of my sleeve here, which makes it a little bit more awkward. Ideally, I would want this elbow underneath this arm, and my head rotated more down to here for more of a classic hawking. Let's have a look. Yeah, so I fall into the little gap there, but Jason persists with this position. He hasn't transitioned to anything else. Perhaps he thinks he can get strangled. Here, here I'm. I'm using part two of the hawking, which is very good for uh, foot mobility. 
because I'm so low down and I'm creating this C shape with my upper torso um, I'm able to just sort of do baby steps and rotate my body around it's very hard for Jason to stop my feet moving and I think this is one of the sort of uh, less spoken about aspects of the hawking in that uh, you're very mobile uh, or you should be able to be very mobile as long as you can move your foot and if you can move your feet and step around in this circular motion either this direction or this direction it affects how uh, the angle of my upper torso and head let's see what happens oh, so that's the end of that round so in a way um, you know he, he you know he, he was very dominant there uh, but I was able to defend and uh, perhaps not escape but at least stop him from uh, submitting me uh, let's move on to 1120 here I have a very good round with Gosha, which um, I've been applying a bit more mount and back defending and escapes. So let's move on. I promised Gosha I would get. I might as well start from the beginning here. Let's see what happens. So I kind of <laughs> flopped a butterfly <laughs> very badly. Annoying hooks. Um, Gosha applies a lot of forward pressure here steps over, doing all the right things I'm trying to stretch her out rather lame guard guard work from me and she just moves into a modified mount here let's turn the sound down because otherwise you hear too much music rather than less me of me talking so she's got this modified mount and I am you can't see it but I'm bracing my forearm across her hip line which stops her progressing into a higher mount here and that that continues for a couple of seconds or so so at the same time she's trying to create some sort of head control but see I'm, I'm, I'm bracing that frame more of a traditional frame but it's it's centered more around about this hip rather than the other hip I'm also turning to keep in my uh, I'm trying to keep us on the side of my body as I can uh, in that sort of modified hawking position here can you see the, the foot planted firmly on the ground here which is pushing my shoulders this way she obviously wants to flatten me or at least get me turning belly side down so she can switch to back control so it's a bit of a battle here well, I'm trying to avoid, prevent her from doing what she wants and she's trying to force me to uh, uh, get in a position that I'm not currently in here so it's a bit of a stalemate here we're gonna move it on a bit so she switches to like more like more of a technical mount I think yeah so I've I've lost the control over her hips there and she's now trying to fashion for an armbar I've turned into this sort of more of a fetal hawking man position. I, I'm tempted to step over and to do running man, but um, I think better of it because I'm still I still feel fairly safe here. Uh, I'm just and I'm just being annoying with my arms. Uh, I wanted to turtle there, didn't quite work. She stopped. She saw it coming. I do turtle there. Now that's interesting. Look at the way I turtled. So rather than just turtle from there, like just lift my bum up and get on my knees I walk uh, you know at a fast pace I walk my lower body around this way this moves me away from danger so that's in a way that's a safer way to turtle um, I'll be trying to be more conscious of that more aware that this is something you should do when you transition to turtle so yeah, I, I turtle away from her so that's something I learned from one of Pritz's videos that he's very adamant about people doing when using his system there we go and and so what happens then is that puts pressure on my shoulder line because she's she stays where she is but I've moved my bum around so there's less pressure on my bum which means I can uh, have more freedom of movement here which uh, in other videos I've described I like to burst out of or, or, or do other things let's have a look what happens so I unsuccessfully try to raise my head probably not wisely given that Gosha's hips are over my head so she switches round she's trying to fish for that forearm um, steps over this is interesting she's really tugging on my neck lapel there uh, I don't feel particularly un under threat but it, I can you obviously feel the weight of your opponent on you and it's, it's not it's not pleasant there you go so she I've defended my neck and I'm just trying to I don't like my back being flat on the ground here it's not very good so I'm just trying to get a hook in and get out of it here I'm trying to a hawking you see that curving position here I'm trying to get my head down to my hip 
the arms in position, there we go, still applying hawking and uh, now I'm turning into running man so these are all robust uh, defending uh, sort of survival positions against someone who's really applying tons of pressure and really keen to attack uh, I switched over to hawking on the other side facing her which is just as effective I tend not to use it as much and times run out okay so that was interesting um, this is going to be a longer video because I wanted to show one more role in our session or on this on this particular day which is very interesting um, so we'll move on to 16 minutes there's a very good little round between Jason and I so Jason and I have a little a role here and at about the 16 minute mark he takes my back so again this is a video is about me showing back escape survival defense let's pick it up from around about here so from this point you can't quite see he's got a body triangle on me which is horrible anyone who is small like me is subject to a body triangle when they have their back taken especially against people with long legs uh, you know lanky people taller people bigger people it's it's horrible and you know, he's he's doing the right thing he's hooking here stopping me from shrimping the traditional shrimping away um, um, uh, but if he was being really mean he could really squeeze that in tight and crush my abdomen which I certainly had that before and, and arch my back and you can actually be tapped from a body triangle it's really unpleasant you want to try and avoid it or at least do your best to get out of it if we had space we can't have we don't have space because we're right by the wall I would one way it was obviously to roll my barrel roll my body to this side and trap his triangled legs underneath my body that's one escape but let's have a look at what I do instead using Pritz hawking method here so I, I, I have space uh, he hasn't got upper body control so I move my head down to my hips uh, it's not the best use of my legs but it's the best I can do at, at the time and uh, creating that C shape and I'm walking around which moves away from his danger zone so hawking, hawking here I'm trying to release his grips here, playing around I'm just making it awkward for him to maintain that body triangle here uh, he's playing with the lapel now, he decides to, because so, of that long distance attack um, now while I'm here, this is interesting when I have access to anyone's feet if I can reach and touch them I will try to attack or at least threaten to attack it's just there's a little bit of mind games but also uh, you know you can get footlocks from there especially if you're playing brown belt rules which I am doing with Jason so I'm just a little threat and in the past I have got some toe holds and weird things from there so he's aware of that so he's thinking oh, shall I release the, the legs or, or not so he's keeping a distance there now um, one thing I could probably have tried to do is with this arm and this arm, both arms, I could have swum them underneath his top leg for an underhook and almost do like a reverse shrimp out of there. That's one thing I could have done. I don't think I thought of it at the time. I was quite happy with being in this hawking position, which again is a very robust defensive position here. He's trying to grab my arm for something. I'm not sure what he's trying to do. It's, you know, I don't feel under threat here. The trick is I'm trying to get away from his his this circle of his legs. So I'm circling and I'm also doing a little bit of shrimping. Uh, I say he decides to come up and attack from there. He's got a shoulder underhook on my on my top arm. I go into a more traditional turtle hair, covering up my elbows, um, defending my neckline. But he's got that underhook here. And look how he's posting his leg. This is very nice. Uh, haha, I see you, Jason. Right, so with this underhook, you might have seen in the previous video, I like to roll the person over, trap them. Or another thing you can do is roll this way for a, um, a, a an omoplata style Americana, Kimura type um, attack. Um, so my natural instinct would be to roll this way, forcing Jason to fall. But there are two problems. Number one, there's the wall. And number two, he's got used to that. I've caught him a few times earlier on, but he's not doing it, falling for that now. He posts his leg out here, which means he's impossible to roll on that side. And I can't roll him that side because I haven't chopped his arm here. So I'm just left with being stuck here in Turtle. I'm, I feel pretty confident defending from Turtle, but it's not getting me anywhere. So let's have a look. So he's got his underhook on me. Maybe he's trying to fish for a clock choke or, or something like that. So I ha it's important I keep this elbow tight. He's working around. He's, usually he likes to lift, lever my leg up. But keeping my head firmly on the ground, it prevents the uh, being tipped over. 
he's repping for some he loves his gila pill style attacks so watch what happens next uh, now if you notice his weight has come off me his his arm and his ribs are over my hips which really is about what 10 percent of his body weight so I think oh, okay there's no pressure on my head there's no pressure on my hips uh, I'll try another escape plan rather than shrimp out or regard let's see what I do it's coming right up so while he's fiddling around uh, I'm perhaps occupied with that so I'm thinking okay I assume he's gonna be there we go there we go I burst out this is a nice thing you can do from turtle if your head is not under control there so I'll just show that again because that's a nice little sequence that I picked up again from watching Preet videos thank you very much Preet Mickelson uh, head on the ground there's no pressure on my head there's not even a lot of pressure on my hip line um, the problem with being in turtle is you get into a very defensive mindset and I'm trying to get out of that uh, and w watching a lot of the people who specialize in turtle they don't just stay in turtle turtle is simply another position from which they transition to others and from here we do a sort of a wrestling style burst out of the blocks which I've been trying to do a lot more and having a little bit successful but you gotta look for the right cues so here the weight is off there uh, I'm sure I'm not doing it in the best way possible I sort of leap to all fours here but it's that sort of surprise that it takes his weight his weight comes off me he's losing his grips here and I just run away <laughs> Brendan Shoud style let's have a look there we go uh, obviously I want to get rid of the grips so now we're sort of into the realm of self defense jiu-jitsu I don't like having my arms gripped over I'm sure there's a million and one self-defense videos out there to uh, learn how to disengage but as far as I'm concerned I just want to bust his arms open and get out of there here we go I, I do grip 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 breaking grip breaking there we go break and move away turn around and then we begin again <laughs> let's, let's finish this so we nearly headbutt each, each other so I kind of uh, there we go so we'll stop it there um, so that was a really good series of roles I wanted to show a whole series of um, Prit shit style um, Hawking uh, Turtle Running Man I'm not sure I used any Baby Bridge in this video I don't think I did uh, and to, to reasonably good effect in terms of defending myself and escaping positions uh, I'm not scoring any points here really I'm not really I'm sure, certainly not in a position to attack with any serious degree but uh, a good example of defensive jiu-jitsu. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Okay.